Good morning. Uh, I hope everyone had a great first day at the conference yesterday and enjoyed the exclusive preview night of the exhibit hall and our welcome reception, which was very well attended. Uh, I want to welcome you to day two of the conference. Uh, in addition to all the fantastic sessions, check out our new CSUN ATC TV broadcast studio over in Platinum 9 and 10. The studio runs concurrent with conference sessions and is also available via live stream through the conference website. Our Birds of a Feather networking meeting for information and communications technology uh, takes place from noon to one today in Platinum One Ballroom. Uh, so make sure to grab your lunch and stop by. Uh, and the exhibit hall officially opens this morning at 9.30 a.m., so take the opportunity to explore all the showcased products and services. This evening, we have some fun planned, some fun things planned. Uh, come play bingo. Uh, join us there at 7 p.m. right here in this room in Platinum 6. Uh, there are some incredible prizes that have been donated by our exhibitors and sponsors, uh, so you don't want to miss it. Uh, this morning, we have our first daily feature presentation. Uh, Ted Drake and Jenison Asuncion. Sorry about that, Jenison. Um, the, the 2023 program co-chairs for the uh, 2023 uh, CSUN Assistive Technology Conference will discuss CSUN's legacy over the past 38 years and how the conference has transformed the accessibility and inclusive design community. Uh, thank you, Ted and Jenison, for sharing your experiences this morning. I'll go ahead and walk over. Oh. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Jenna and I had a meeting about two months ago thinking about what could we talk about and we threw out some lofty ideas and then after discussing lofty ideas for a while we kind of started thinking about what does CSUN actually mean to us and how has the CSUN conference actually impacted us um, over the last two decades and so what we decided to do is instead of talking about a new topic is this uh, it's off okay uh, instead of talking about one topic, we figured let's talk about the impact CSUN's had on us. And that's what this conversation's about. It's going to be a little bit looser, a little bit lighter, as we reminisce on some of the, uh, some of the events and some of the sessions that were impactful for us. Oh, let me grab my glasses. As this is the first session of Wednesday, I wanted to start off with a land acknowledgement. <coughs> Excuse me. Why I turned my head when the microphone's attached to my head, I don't know. <laughs> we want to respectfully acknowledge the Gabrielino and Tongva and Ahachiman who have stewarded this land in Los Angeles and Orange County throughout the generations. We ask you to join us in acknowledging their communities, their ancestors, and elders, both past and present as well as their future generations. We also acknowledge that our presence on this land is the result of occupation of indigenous land. This acknowledgement is part of our commitment to work towards honoring the ongoing legacies of the Gabrielino, Tongve, and Hachiman and indigenous peoples around the world. Land acknowledgements are something that we do at Intuit quite often, and I'm part of the Indigenous Peoples Network, so um, this is not necessarily part of the CSUN conference, but I did want to start the session with that. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Ted Drake, and I'm the uh, Accessibility and Inclusive Design Leader at Intuit. We make TurboTax, QuickBooks, Credit Karma, MailChimp, basically the accounting software that helps businesses and people run their lives. Um, I've been attending CSUN since approximately 2010. I say approximately because I think that's when it was, and I, I actually wasn't here for the first one. I was up in the office, uh, I'll explain later, uh, taking care of things that were happening at the moment uh, every 30 seconds down here. Um, one of the things we want to do is talk about some of our strategies. Like, what do we do when we come to CSUN? How do we make the most out of CSUN? For me, I like to attend stuff I don't know anything about. Um, I know ARIA. I know semantic HTML. I know how to do automated testing. So. I don't go to those sessions very often. Instead, I look for those things I don't know anything about. Yesterday, I attended a session on emergency communication, uh, research on how does emergency communication happen for people with disabilities, especially like weather-related alerts. That's something that really doesn't have anything to do with Intuit, but it helps me get a broader uh, range of knowledge. I take notes during the session. 
And one of the things that's nice about taking notes during sessions is you can go back and you can search your archives. So you can find out what people are saying. And if you wait until the evening, you're not going to remember anything. Especially if you wait until next week, <laughs> your, your, your mind's just going to be empty. So take notes during sessions. And also, if someone gives me a card, I pull out a pen and I write a note. Like I was doing that this morning, I went through my cards and I'm like, okay, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta do that. It really helps you. Otherwise, you'll end up with a stack of business cards. You don't know what they mean, or at least that's the case for me. And the other thing is, uh, it's been pretty good here this year, but it's nice to find a quiet spot that has Wi Fi uh, so that you can work. And uh, downstairs, well, that's kind of cheating, but there is a place where you can hide downstairs that usually is quiet. Um, it may have Wi Fi. Uh, let me uh, pass it on to, oh, and also outside when it's not raining, those picnic tables are a good place to work. Uh, let me pass it on to Jenison. <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jenison Asuncion, and in my daytime life, I am head of accessibility engineering evangelism at a network that you may have heard of, LinkedIn. Uh, I am also co-founder of Global Accessibility Awareness Day. Um, how many of you, just by, by noise uh, and such, were at uh, Mike Paciello's uh, great keynote yesterday? <laughs> so I, I, when I was putting my stuff together this morning, I was like, this, uh, Mike and I are walking in parallel universes because <laughs> Um, the first time I attended CSUN was in 1993 as this wide-eyed uh, college student um, who didn't know much about anything except I, I, I knew I wanted to work in something to do with technology and helping people with, with disabilities or impairments. Uh, but I came here sitting in sessions about all kinds of technology that totally went over my head. Um, and I was like, this, play, this is not for me. Um, and then I went to the exhibit hall and there was some cool tech and all that good stuff. So rest assured, here I am now in 20, 20, what are we, 2023. Um, and uh, since then, uh, I've, I've spoken. Uh, I had my first talk at CSUN back in 1999. I've been a, rev a session reviewer since 2011 and I've alternated between being a program uh, session chair for the general sessions and being conference co-chair or conference chair since 2015. So I can assure all of you, particularly those of you who are here for the first time, and you might be going to sessions going like this is like, um, do I belong here? <laughs> yes, you belong here and there's a place for everyone. Um, in terms of strategies, uh, because people often come to me and they're like, there's so many sessions and so many, like, how do I do this? So a couple of things. One is just assume you're not going to make it to every session that you think you're <laughs> going to make it to. Okay? Either the sessions are full or you do what I do, which is you end up finding, you bump into someone in the hallway, some of us literally, uh, and... <laughs> You strike up a quick conversation, do not pass up those opportunities. Now that we're all back in person, this is the kind of stuff that unfortunately is not, you can't necessarily do this in the accidental, incidental, wonderful way that you can in person. So take that opportunity and you know what? If you miss a session, contact the person who's giving the session um, and ask them like, either to meet or ask them for a copy of their slides. Um, it's a great opportunity uh, to, to do some networking that way. So that's, that's one thing. The other thing is um, build multiple schedules. Um, I found myself doing that a lot. I even have like multiple cards. Uh, for those of you who are completely blind, I'm holding up uh, Braille cards. Long live Braille, by the way. Um, but uh, yes, uh, and now of course I've graduated to having everything on my phone. So I have an earpiece in all the time, checking sessions and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, build multiple schedules. Uh, assume that you're not going to be in everything. Now, Ted was talking about how he likes to go to sessions where he doesn't know the topic. I'm a little the opposite. It was interesting uh, when Ted and I were preparing for this. Um, for me, uh, because I spend a lot of time training uh, engineers and whatnot on different topics, I like to go to uh, some of the intro th sessions because I'd like to see how different people um, teach the introductory stuff, like what is ARIA, what is this, all of that. 
to me, it's always enlightening to just, just, just because you, you get rusty or, or you might want to find a new metaphor to use or a new technique to train people on something. So I tend to go to, to sessions where uh, I might know the topic, but I'm there just to learn uh, new, new things. Uh, checking my notes, checking my notes. Yeah, so um, Ted, why don't we sure. keep moving? <clears throat> So what makes uh, CSUN special? <clears throat> we thought of some categories. And so for each of those categories, we're going to expand on some of the sessions or events. So I talked to Carl Grove last night. Uh, we we're going to talk about funniest moments first. And I said, Carl, are you coming today? And he said, no, I'm going to be asleep. <laughs> um, and I said, well, you're going to be a part of it. And I'll give you a little hint. It's going to be a disaster. So did anybody attend? the Viking and the Lumberjacks mobile session. <clears throat> you wish you were there, sort of. <laughs> so this is one of the things about CSUN is that <clears throat> nobody knew what the session was going to be about. It had a really dull name, like mobile testing. Um, but Carl and Billy Gregory had done some other sessions that were a lot of fun. So the place was packed. It was standing room only. And this is back when we might actually squeeze a few extra people into rooms. And they tried doing their presentation, and if anything could fail, it failed. Um, nothing worked. Not their devices, not the connections, not the audio. So they're up there trying to struggle and teach us about mobile testing. And then they asked the team, the people in the room, go ahead and turn on your screen readers. This is a room of about 40 accessibility professionals, and everybody had a screen reader on their phone. Everybody knew how to use a screen reader, so it's not like an introduction. So you can imagine 40 screen readers starting up, probably 50 screen readers starting up at the same time. We were hearing each other's schedules, their text messages, <laughs> their work. People started yelling across the room <laughs> because they were hearing something that they had just written. Um, it eventually, it just devolved into utter chaos, and it was just like a big giggle fest as we couldn't believe that we were in such a, a, a disaster. <laughs> so Carl wrote afterwards, he said, this presentation was an absolute disaster, but in a, in a funny way. <laughs> and I think anybody that attended that session, we have one person up at the front that attended that session, um, you'll agree that sometimes the worst uh, technical snafus can actually become your favorite moments. Um, and he did survive. Uh, Carl and Billy have gone on to other greater things. Uh, I would recommend seeing Carl in the uh, trade show uh, with Level Access. Um, so that was my funniest moment. There's been a lot of funny moments, but I'm going to pass it on to Jenison for his. Yeah. I, uh, so for me, I, I think one uh, less funniest but more funnest, if that's even a word, uh, karaoke. So here, here we are, you know, we're all during the daytime, we're all uh, professionals doing all these cool things, but at night, potentially inspired by an adult beverage or two, <laughs> or more, um, people get up there, or they, back in the day, people would get up there and, and belt out tunes. I'd be like, who was that? And they'd tell me who it is. I'm like, really? They were singing up a song, and it just gives you this all different perspective on people because we're, we're, not, we're not our career. We're not our job, right? So it's just nice to see people in a different element. And how wonderful is it that karaoke is back this year? <laughs> so on thir is it Thursday? Thurs yes. Thursday Thurs from 7 to 11 and Platinum 6. There so you is go. that this Platinum 6? Is this? Yeah. Here we are. So that's one, that's one funny moment. I think the other fun, 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 fun moment for me is... Um, the times uh, when we were in San Diego, does anyone, everyone remember, do some people remember San Diego? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> remember the multiple floors and having to go from seaport to harbor? Well, I, well, and for those of you who remember going from the Hilton to the Marriott in Los Angeles, anyone in the room for that? Oh, one in the back. <laughs> those were fun times. But so we had these Braille maps. Uh, of, the, of the Hyatt, and every once in a while I would misjudge where the rooms were located. So for me the funnest, the fun time was just trying to figure out which room, like if I was in the right room, and sometimes I would be in the wrong room,
But it would be those chance moments where I'd be ending up attending a presentation that I didn't necessarily expect to be in. <laughs> Uh, but there we were, and that was the, you know, Ted, to your point around attending sessions that you wouldn't necessarily attend. Um, it happened on occasion, um, but uh, my Braille map reading skills definitely improved since then. Um, <laughs> so those were uh, two fun moments for me. If you have a chance, uh, either during this session or afterwards, it's a good time to go on the LinkedIn blog for Jenison and actually leave some of your uh, memories that you have had. Yeah, use the uh, CSUNATC23 hashtag on your favorite social platform. Now, this next one is a uh, most emotional moment, and um, it didn't actually happen, and I'll explain it. And Jenison's going to skip this one. But for those that know, Joe O'Connor uh, was a key part of this conference. And he, he had, a terminal, he had uh, a terminal illness, you could say. He knew he was going to pass away. But he also knew that he had to prepare his daughter for his death. So Joe, he put together a proposal called a proposal for an accessible death. And if you can imagine what that would have been like in this room, everybody knowing Joe and learning about what he was doing to prepare his gravesite, his uh, celebration, teaching his daughter, um, and setting up everything for uh, an inclusive death. His daughter, Siobhan, had Krita Schatz syndrome, and she was intellectually uh, disabled. So it was, would have been an extremely powerful, and unfortunately, we weren't able to see that presentation. I'll, 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 I'll sneak one in, I impromptu, you, in terms of emotional moment, or more just like uh, that type of moment was my very first CSUN presentation. Again, it was back in 1999. I was a grad student. Um, I was doing accessibility as a side hustle at that point, uh, not a full-time job. And just coming in there with all of these people who had a lot more knowledge than me at the time and being so welcomed in, uh, feeling all, you know, obviously as a first-time speaker, feeling nervous and all that kind of stuff. Had, had a, a three-quarters filled room and just a, the, the feeling of, of relaxation. And, and, and Mike talked about this yesterday, about the family piece. Um, and I, you know, I, the last time I was there, as I mentioned before, was in 93 when I was a student and kind of like over my head with all these technical things. But coming in the first time to do a presentation in, in 99, it, it set a course for me in terms of my career and, and, and just that whole thing. And that stands out to me as a, as a, as a moment in time that, that is, is, is memorable. Um, but just around uh, Joe yeah. O'Connor, that, yeah, that was <laughs> something. We want to talk about coolest technology. Now, before I go into the one that I had planned, is there anybody here from Sony? I guess not. Um, OK, Sony has a camera right now and it has an adapter. Now this is one of the truly, this is like a CSUN story for me because maybe about 10 years ago in San Diego, there was a booth that was demonstrating this really avant-garde technology that instead of your eye looking at a reflective surface, you know, like a typical TV monitor. So it was, it was looking like Google, Google Glass at the time. Um, but instead of having a reflective monitor, it had a laser that was projecting into the back of your uh, eye and skipping the um, cornea and going straight to the retina. I hope I have that correct. Um, I brought over a friend of mine, Victor Sarn, and his wife, Carol Karen, and she has uh, cornea issues. She's uh, lower vision. She put on that device, and it was at the time, it was just projecting a tiny little cartoon. And she said it was the first thing that she had seen clearly uh, since she was a child because it bypassed the front of her eye, just went straight into the retina. So I kept watching this technology develop over the years. And what you're gonna see if you go to that Sony booth is that technology attached to a camera that you can purchase coming soon for, a, I think it was an outrageously low price of I think $500. Now keep in mind, this is a Sony camera. I paid double that for my Sony camera. Um, so I would highly recommend if you go to the trade show, look for the Sony booth and check out that, because that's one of those examples of technology 
that if you went to the trade show every year for the last 10 years, you could have seen this technology um, evolve. And we're sort of, CSUN, I don't know if they've been showing that off at other conferences, so it's really, really nice. Did you have? Yeah, no, um, were you done or did you? No, I'm gonna okay. go on to, okay. now, speaking of cameras, <clears throat> my favorite technology, is Lucy Greco in here? No, I don't see her. At two, in 2010, I was part of Yahoo Accessibility Lab, and we wanted to do something fun for CSUN. Um, our other idea, which thankfully didn't happen, was we were gonna dress up as clowns and sit out in the street because the intersection in front of the CSUN conference did not have audio uh, crossing. So if you wanted to cross the street, you never knew when it was beeping. So we were gonna dress up as clowns and go back and forth and help people cross the street. Fortunately, we decided something different. <laughs> so this was before GoPros, this was before the iPhone, this was before we had regular technology that you have built in. We decided to take a Nokia camera, phone, and it was custom programmed so that every, whenever that phone was moving, every 30 seconds it would take a picture. It would geolocate that picture and it would upload it to Flickr. And we took that camera, we built a custom little satchel and we attached it to Lucy Greco's guide dog, Pecan. So Pecan became the seeing dog camera, um, live streaming the CSUN 2010. I was actually up in the Bay Area watching every 30 seconds refreshing Flickr so I could open it up and like edit out pictures that shouldn't be there. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, flipping them, because most of the times they were upside down. Um, everybody thought it was some kind of wild promotion that Yahoo was doing. We just did it because we thought it would be fun. But that's when I first met Lucy Greco. She, uh, she ended up using uh, that camera with Pecan for about two years going to different places. Uh, and that stream is still live. So I have a picture on the screen of the camera in this bag. And I also have an example of uh, Pecan going through the uh, trade show. Now I'm from California, but my family's from the South. That's why I see Pecan and Pecan. Uh, <laughs> I, I never know which one to go for. Um, Jenison, do you wanna? Yeah. So for me, uh, in terms of coolest technology, uh, I've been fascinated with the evolution of, of refreshable braille displays. It's a little geeky. Um, but having been someone who used a braille display through school and they were, when they were a lot bigger and bulkier and a lot more expensive, uh, just going into the trade show year after year and seeing all of these latest and greatest uh, technology when it comes to braille displays, um, they've gotten a lot smaller, a lot sleeker, uh, with multiple line uh, braille displays. And hey, every once in a while, I bumped into Stevie Wonder. <laughs> he does make appearances, by the way. I'm not sure if he's gonna be here this year. But, um, but, so you get a little bit of braille display and you get a brush with celebrity, not, not too bad. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Stevie comes because he buys a lot of technology for he local does. schools. He does. Uh, we're going to talk about most unique moments, things that you just don't uh, see anywhere else or any other conference. Uh, Jenison, you were going to start. Yeah. Uh, so for me, um, while I don't use it that much, I, I, I have always been fascinated by um, indoor uh, navigation and wayfinding technology. And that really has evolved over the years. And it's just been fascinating coming to the conference and every year there's some new innovations. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you folks out there are using the good maps. There we go. Um, so that's uh, like, how easy is it now um, to, to get around the conference uh, using good maps and things like that. But certainly, yeah, a lot of the wayfinding technology and the discussions around wayfinding, that's not stuff that you'll necessarily find anywhere else uh, in, in such an accessible way than here at this conference. Yeah, I remember back in San Diego, there was a lot of gorilla indoor way, wayfinding <laughs> where people were buying Bluetooth beacons and like hiding them in the plants and stuff so that they could create the structure of San Diego because that was a confusing building. Yeah. Um, but then again, you had to discover them. So I wanna, it, this also goes back to San Diego. Uh, San Diego was right next to a place called Little Italy. That was where a lot of people would walk or take the trolley, it was about two miles away from the uh, 
facilities, but that's where everybody would go for dinner, unless you were going to the gas lamp quarter to get drunk. I'm sorry, Jenison. <laughs> tipsy, tipsy. <laughs> so there were about, I was in a group of about 20 to 25 people that were blind, and we went to Filippi's, which is a very famous uh, family Italian restaurant. We took over this huge table. It was a bit chaotic, uh, very loud, very fun, a lot of laughter. Next to us was a flight attendant that helped us out a couple times because people needed some help reading menus or uh, finding this or that. And afterwards, she left us a message. And I still have this napkin. I saved it. And on the napkin, she wrote, <clears throat> to the lovely cheery table next to me, thank you for making my lonely night fill up with laughter. It's hard to eat alone. At a family place like this, sometimes more so. So thanks for letting me help, and thanks for helping me from an Alaskan airline flight attendant. Hope to see you all in the skies. And that was CSUN 2013. Wow. That's always the, and, and you bring up the point, which I'm going to talk about also. It's, it's, it's these chance moments. So for me, uh, not surprisingly, uh, it's, it's all about the networking opportunities that happen. So there were these, uh, back in the day, again, this is San Diego. Um, they, we used to have these tweet ups. Everyone who didn't know each other but who met through Twitter would get together. Um, and it was, it was a little chaotic because we had a band in there, I think, too. No end in sight. Was that them? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a band in there and we had people trying to chat and all that kind of stuff. So that was pretty unique. Um, then a, the, 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 the one invitation that many of us were always trying to get was a very large search engine company would host uh, a reception. Uh, and that was always like the big ticket item that people would want to do. But outside of any of those things, the tweet up or that, the, those uh, yearly uh, events that happened with that large search engine company, um, just meeting people in the hotel bar and meeting people just here and there and grabbing time, you know, people that you've, you've read about or you've read their blog, all of that kind of thing. Um, to me, those were impactful moments in time because you, you, you know, everyone is spread out. And more so even now, now that many of us, how many are, are this is the first uh, CSUN uh, post-pandemic? Oh yeah? yeah, quite a few. Just that opportunity to come back and to reconnect in person with, with people, those, those are, those are fairly impactful moments, I, I would say. Um, yeah, what, what else do you have? Uh oh, I wanted to, I was, knew there was something. Yeah. No end in sight. So does anybody know that band? <laughs> it was uh, four, four or five people that were from the industry, from like Yahoo and eBay and stuff like that, uh, was Oracle. Everybody in the band was blind. So there were guitar, drums, accordion, I mean, not accordion, but uh, organ um, and bass, I think. I can't remember exactly. But the thing is, is that they'd all played in bands before, but they'd never played in an all-blind band. And so they were waiting for someone <laughs> to, um, to round, finish the songs. Normally in a band, there's like a visual you're watching or there's some kind of audio signal to say, okay, now we're going to wrap up a song but nobody was taking leadership. So it was like these songs would keep going and going and going. And so that's why they called themselves No End in Sight. <laughs> uh, they, they've also performed at Yahoo on our, um, uh, we had a special accessibility day at Yahoo and they were one of the performers. Uh, they did it first at, at CSUN. That's when we realized that they never knew when to stop. And so that we officially named them that for the Yahoo event. I guess in closing, what I'd like to say is, you know, as a member of the Conference Advisory Council alongside Ted, you know, the conference isn't anything without all of you in terms of feedback and such. It's, it's amazing how many social events and new things uh, have appeared this year. A lot of that is because of the feedback we've gotten, you know, over the last couple of years. So you are listened to. So please do make sure to provide feedback, whether it's to us in person, if you catch us in the hallways, or at the end of the conference, uh, emailing um, your ideas. Because this, this is your conference. This is an opportunity for all of us to grow in our careers 
and to get the most out of it. We, we, there's a reason we're at 38. It's because we, we're, 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 doing we're doing a lot of things right, but we're always innovating um, to, to new things. So definitely um, pro provide feedback. Let us know like with all the social events that are happening. Is it too much, too little? What more, what less do you need? So we're looking forward to getting your feedback on that front. I don't know, do you have yeah, we have the uh, final one. And also, keep in mind, if you come up to me especially, I have a little bit of face blindness. I have a hard time remembering faces. So if you see me going, <laughs> you know, just kind of lost, uh, please tell me your name. <laughs> just, just assume I don't remember your name, because I do have a little bit of that face blindness. And <clears throat> I'm sure with Jenison, we're meeting so many people this week that it does help to have a reminder. Yeah, and, and I'll also say a pro tip. Uh, and I think my, my fellow colleagues in the audience who are blind would appreciate this too. You know, the one thing we miss as people who are completely blind is that kind of eye contact that people make to kind of uh, in, like signal that they're interested in coming over to talk to you. So just come over and talk. Uh, it, it's fine. And he, like for me in particular, even if I have an earpiece in, uh, it just meant mean that I'm checking text messages or whatnot. Uh, but come over, say hello. Provide us feedback. We want to continue to build this conference and make it uh, something that you'll want to keep attending uh, year after year. So we wanted to finish up with some of the most impactful sessions and events, things that when we did this, uh, attended this, or participated in this, it really did change the course of our career. Uh, I want to start by going back to the first CSUN conference that I attended in person, which was 2011. And if you pull yourself back into that time, uh, I was a web developer. Um, I was also part of the Yahoo Accessibility Lab. <clears throat> Our day-to-day -day job was really focused on making Yahoo Screen Reader um, accessible. And we were spending a lot of time on keyboard accessibility. So 99% of my time was focused at that time on screen readers and keyboards. And I don't think that I'm unique in that aspect in 2011. I think most of web development was focused on screen readers and keyboard developments. And then, of course, that includes things like alt text and headings and such. But I did not have a reference, really, for the broad spectrum of disabilities and what that means for inclusive design and accessibility. We had just started a, uh, a website for the Accessibility Lab. And we had a bunch of uh, guest writers. One of the guest writers was Glenda Watson Hyatt. She had just started uh, blogging about using Proloco to go on her iPad in order to have independence uh, because she has a communication disability. So I went and I looked for Glenda and I, I wanted to say hi to her. And I wanted to attend this session. This session seemed like it was going to be kind of a boring topic the new AAC Cheap and Disruptive. And I thought, well, I'm going to see Glenn. I just want to say hi to her. There was, by any chance, did anybody else attend that session? I would be surprised, because there was only like 20 people in the room. Um, the session was taught by Glenda Watson Hyatt and Joe O'Connor. And they were discussing uh, augmented, let me get this see if I, augmentative and adaptive, Alternative, I always get the second A mixed, alternative communication devices. Uh, Joe was talking about his daughter, Siobhan, which I talked about Joe earlier. Siobhan has Creta Schatz syndrome. It's uh, a genetic, uh, 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 it's a uh, mutation of one of the genes. Um, causes intellectual disabilities, a lack of communication. Uh, she could still communicate, she just couldn't speak. Um, so she used a combination of AAC devices, and that goes from pictograms on pieces of cloth that would be attached to uh, Velcro to create sentences to using a purpose-built AAC device. So whichever worked best for her at that time is what she would use for her communication. Glenda um, had been using multiple, and she would speak in what she would call Glendish, and for those that know Glenda well, they could understand what she was saying. But for someone um, that doesn't have the patience or is not familiar with listening to someone with affected speech, um, it was hard to understand Glenda's speech patterns. 
So she had just recently uh, bought an iPad and got ProLoco to go. Um, <clears throat> what should have been a rather dry presentation was this deep empathy session to understand what it means to have a communication disability. Um, and how does the ability to say things like, I want to order a macchiato, uh, how life-changing that can be for someone. So that was the first time that I had been introduced to something other than screen readers. And I shouldn't say that, because I also knew people that we had colleagues that had cerebral palsy and um, uh, were deaf. But at the same time, I wasn't focusing on them in my daily work. And this was one of those sessions that kind of jolted me out of it and said, we can't focus. I mean, we have to focus on screen readers and keyboard, but we can't make that our priority. We have to otherwise focus on others. Now, if you search my name in CSUN, you'll see I've done presentations on sickle cell disease, long COVID, intersectionality, um, trickle down uh, accessibility was directly related to this. It was that concept that if we solve for screen readers and keyboard users, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're solving for the other 80% of the people. We still have to solve for those two, but we have to start spending time thinking about um, ASL, thinking about anxiety, pain, uh, communication, dyslexia, neurodiversity. So that this one presentation is what helped me broaden my perspective. And that's why I go to sessions that I don't know anything about. Um, that was the first time I had done that, and now every conference I go to, about a third of the sessions are, you know, mystery for me. Uh, so that was the one session that really changed my career. And yeah, so for me, um, as I mentioned, uh, when I first started coming to CSUN and presenting, uh, accessibility uh, was a side hustle uh, for me. I, I was doing some other stuff in school, not related to accessibility. But for me, uh, I'm from Canada originally. Any Canadians in the audience? <laughs> Whoa. All right. Settle down. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so coming here to the States, so I, I, uh, and I still am affiliated with the Adapt Tech Research Network. We do research on the use of computer uh, ICTs by college and university students with different disabilities back in Canada. And we would come here to present on, on our research and just to learn about the, the differences here in the US, uh, forget about the high tuition, but uh, just, just hearing about how the colleges and universities were different here uh, was definitely eye-opening for me uh, and understanding how that whole, like how the government funding worked and all of that. Uh, so I would attend a lot of sessions on post-secondary education, which is where I first found my footing in accessibility before I uh, made the transition to accessibility full-time in 2006, um, and then from then on, I would still, and, and I still have a soft spot, st soft um, part in my heart for uh, higher ed and, and accessibility and all that stuff, but then I, I, I noticed myself more evolve, like more moving into the digital accessibility stuff. The, the things Ted just talked about, um, the keyboard accessibility, and, and, and all of those uh, devices and, 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 and things like that. The one area where I've, I've found great amounts of information learning here is that whole realm of, co of, of folks with cognitive disabilities and the different digital accessibility challenges um, those folks face uh, in interacting with technology. A lot of that, again, is still being thought through and understood but I've, I, I've uh, gotten a lot of good information at sessions uh, here on that topic as well. Uh, with that, Jensen, we're uh, ready to wrap up and give people a few minutes back on their time. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, I guess, the, the, like I said, the, the, the only other thing I, I would say is, like, again, everyone, if, particularly if you're, how, how many are here for the first time? Oh, nice, especially in the back. Yeah. Ted, Ted was saying uh, most, a lot of folks in the back were the ones who were saying uh, their first year. <laughs> so here's a hint for people in the back. If you're a first time person, come to the front because that's when you're gonna get the, uh, the help and the attention you need uh, because the people in the front typically will dominate conversations. So we wanna see new, uh, new visitors in the front of the rooms. As a speaker, it means a lot more to me when I'm talking to someone that's uh, 
learning something new. And, and for me, so like I said, if you can find me, uh, usually at the bar, um, <laughs> I'd uh, be happy to, uh, to, to um, give you uh, guidance if you're having trouble like choosing between two different presentations and things. But the stuff that I want to say is uh, the, the, the strategies I brought up at the beginning were just assume that you are not going to be going to all the sessions you intended to. And take those opportunities to meet people in the hallways, but also, more importantly, take care of yourself. Like, don't overdo it. I, I know so many people who are, like, uh, dragging their bodies around the next morning, <laughs> and you just, okay, me included. But you just, you just, you're not going to get the full experience unless you're taking care of yourself. So enjoy the conference. Enjoy the time. I hope that there were some nuggets of info <laughs> from Ted and I that, that you either relate to or are going to implement yourself for the next few days. Uh, and again, don't forget karaoke on Thursday night. And bi bi was it bingo tonight? I think that was uh, bingo tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check all that stuff out. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you, everybody.